perhaps it was seeing the announcement of another all-white literary panel or award finalists list or any other literary event in my social media feed, I do recall feeling frustrated and defeated, the same emotions I feel every time I witness the prevalence of whiteness and pacing around in my apartment texting my friends about the incident. I recall even texting a friend, I'm gonna name my next book, even this page is white. It was half meant to be a joke, but the phrase stayed with me and found its way into a poem, White Dreams. This was the first poem that I would write for what would become my first collection of poetry, Even This Page is White. I have white dreams, billboards, magazines, mighty praise, accolades, top 10 hits and top 10 lists. So I climb, dodge boulders, earn blisters, but even the top of the mountain is white. I have a white boy that I top. I dream on his past body as his, I dream on his long body as his past bodies have long built upon mine. But when I come on the dip in his spine, even the color of my pleasure is white. Body, you betray me, the only brown I make for sewer, but for him? For him, my brown body makes white, makes nice. If my cum was brown, would he still eat it? From my core, I seek courage, but even my bones are white. Is it my skin that betrays the skeleton? I pray for answers, for my dreams, hunched back, dim light, blue ink, Blank paper, knelt over, wept over. Now I grasp why 34 years of praying through writing awoke no God. Even this page is white. So I protest this page, mask it with words, words about being brown, about my mother, my motherland. But even these words have white dreams, billboards, magazines, crystal trophies. Because what are words without dreams? And what is a dream if it is not white? I've always found exploring a new art medium invigorating, but the realm of poetry felt unknowable and its entry impermissible. I felt as though I had to tread cautiously, reverently, hands clasped for fear of offending past and present poets and poetry itself. When I sent early drafts of my manuscript to poet peers for feedback, I often would sheepishly ask, does this read as amateur? Somehow I managed to get managed to forget my own histories of writing journals of poetry in my grade school, and that I'd even had poetry published in a religious magazine in India in my teens. It was only when I began to read works by poets of color that this anxiety began to lift. In their words, I felt a kinship, an understanding in their styles as varying as they are, I felt a permission to find my own voice as opposed to feeling restricted or intimidated by abstract rules. How often must you prove your pigment when your entire body is painted bronze? Have you ever heard white question its color? Snow, moon, salt, milk, tooth, chalk. What if there's no right way to be brown besides the brown you are? Soil, nut, clove, wheat, bark, Pluto. 
it was then that I realized that it wasn't poetry that was the barrier, but the whiteness of it. Most of the poetry I'd ever been exposed to had been by white authors. This realization was solidified when I started going to poetry events and I noticed that mine was often the only brown body in the room. Of course, the dominance of whiteness and the exclusion it breeds can be witnessed in any art medium, but navigating poetry's white guard felt particularly challenging whilst writing about racism. Above agonizing over what makes a poem good, or rather, who decides what makes a poem good, I felt an added concern of how to write a good poem about racism especially because I could foresee um, potential criticism of poor craft wielded as a way to dismiss the content. I was also concerned about readers of color. If I considered white readers and their possible reaction in any way, was I prioritizing whiteness? Is it actually possible to write about oppression by white people and institutions without centering Whiteness? Are you staring at me because, are you not looking at me because, you don't desire me because, you only desire me because, I don't like myself because, I wish I was like you. Am I safe here? Where are the others like me? There are no others like me. I was not considered because, I was only considered because. Why would you say that? Did you say that because? Do I respond? How do I respond in a way that you'll hear me? How do I respond without making you angry or uncomfortable? Can I be okay with not responding? Why doesn't somebody else respond? I shouldn't have said anything. Are you ignoring me because I responded? There has to be another explanation. Maybe I'm making this up. Maybe I'm too sensitive. Maybe I'm too defensive. Not everything is because. I can't assume the worst. Of course I'm safe here. Of course there are others like he me here. You probably haven't seen someone like me before. I just need to work harder. I just need to work harder. I just need to work harder. You don't know how to think about this. You don't mean what you said. Of course you care about me. Of course you'll hear me. Maybe it's good for you to be uncomfortable. Maybe I'm better off in the long run. What would I think of if I wasn't thinking about this? A dog named Lavender? A home in Idaho? A book about landscapes? What would I make if I wasn't thinking about this? Who could I be if I wasn't thinking about this? So talking to friends of color about racism, it often feels like the conversation and our rage solely circulates amongst us. We provide necessary comfort to each other, but I wanna see white people get angry and take action against racism too. I wanted to write poetry that would provoke this. Thank you for naming all of your privileges. Now what? <laughs>